Before I begin, I just want to say that what we're trying to learn are generalities. We're going to learn the rules and not the exceptions. As you go through uh, the video, uh, there will absolutely be different times when you're going to say, hey, what about this disease? How about that disease? Sure. Uh, there are always exceptions and you know, uh, th th that's what you learn during your uh, residency and beyond. But where you guys are starting out, you want to learn the general rules. And then you can build on and learn the exceptions. Alrighty, we are now back. We're now at the brainstem level. So before I begin, I just want to make sure that you guys did what I asked you to do on the previous video, which is look up two syndromes in the brainstem, let's say lateral medullary or lateral pontine, and compare the two. See what's different, what's the same, and what's unique about those. If you haven't done that, you know, you're going to do yourself an injustice by just forging ahead with this video. Just pause the video, go, open your books, read up on those, and then come back. And, and you know, one concept I just want to emphasize, and I'll, em I'll emphasize this concept over and over again in future videos, is this is not a race to just memorize and pass a test. This is your new profession. You, you really want to understand this stuff. Even if you're not going into neurology, you really want to understand uh, some of these basic, basic concepts. And what I'm going over these videos is not anything that a senior resident needs to know. It's what a medical student needs to know. So when I say, please pause and learn the stuff, please do that. It's for your own good. And you will not believe how much better of a medical student you're going to appear in clinics if you do these basic, basic things. So trust me on this. And um, yeah, um, and uh, uh, you will be an amazing student uh, because of it. So now brainstem. So what are the hallmark signs and symptoms of brainstem lesion? And you know, most folks tell me, Oh, it's cranial nerves. That really doesn't tell me much. So think about what's unique about a brainstem lesion. And so let's um, do it a different way. Let's see how they're similar first. So if you have a brainstem stroke, as an example, what part of your body will be weak? The contralateral side, okay? If you have a subcortical stroke, a internal capsule stroke, or a cortical stroke, middle cerebral artery stroke, what side of the body will be affected, the contralateral side. So how does, you know, how's the brainstem different in this respect? Well, from a weakness sensory standpoint for the body, uh, it is not different. It is just like any other stroke. The contralateral body will be affected motor and sensory. But the cranial nerves, yes, they will also be affected, but even more important, the most important aspect of a brainstem lesion is cranial nerves are ipsilaterally affected. If you didn't catch this when you were reading about these different syndromes, pause the video, look up these syndromes, and see th that that is actually listed right there in your face. You guys just missed it. Okay, so ipsilateral cranial nerve dysfunction with contralateral body dysfunction. Uh, dysfunction meaning sensory or motor loss. There is nowhere else in the body where you can have these crossed findings. Important phrase, crossed findings. And just a quick point, the term ipsy and contralateral are referring to in reference to the lesion. So if you have a left brainstem lesion, you'll have left cranial nerve dysfunction and right-sided body symptoms. So not only are you now very quickly localizing it to the brainstem because of the crossed findings, but you're also lateralizing to right or left. For example, if you have uh, right facial droop and left-sided weakness, okay, it's cross findings, it's brainstem. So now that you have right facial droop, you know it's right brainstem, not just brainstem. And on your exams, yes, sometimes they'll ask you specifically, is it the midbrain, pons, medulla, uh, but most of the time, um, they're trying to see if you even recognize it is brainstem. They're going to put other choices like uh, uh, spinal cord or cortical or subcortical. And the millisecond you see these crossed findings, stop, don't go any further, it's brainstem, and move on, okay? 
We are almost done, guys. We have two more left. We have subcortical and cortical, and I'm going to put both of these together. So we've now done six, which is muscle one, uh, neuromuscular junction two, nerve three, nerve root four, spinal cord five, brainstem six. The last two, like I said, subcortical and cortical we're going to do together. So seven, eight will be together on the next video. So uh, we're almost done, guys. Hang in there. And we will see you on the next video.